In my last video, I attempted to sculpt a bunch of characters with a 15 minute hard time limit. My brain almost melted, but it was a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I'll put a link down below. Right now, we're out here in the great wilderness of uh, my neighborhood, just looking for some random shapes to attempt to sculpt. There's this challenge I keep seeing online where everybody's taking either water splotches or random coffee stains or something of that sort and attempting to create characters out of those splotches. So what I'm going to do is try to do that in 3D. So I'm out here looking for some random shapes. Haven't really found much luck yet, but uh, we'll see what we can do. So y'all probably think I stay inside a lot, you'd be correct in that, but uh, out here I'm kind of one with nature, I feel really at ease and not hot or uncomfortable by all this digging through, oh man, I haven't seen the sun in a minute. We are going to stop right here, because there is a really nasty spider web right in front of me. Oh, and I'm kind of standing in it a little bit. So I haven't found any random shapes yet, but I have found the cool kid hangout where everybody goes and does their underage drinking. Uh, that's about it so far. We're gonna keep uh, on our adventure here though. This is kind of a really weird rock. Ugh, I'm afraid to kind of poke this thing. It looked really mushy. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, that's... That is super gross. I don't know what those are. They look like little tiny ants. Probably just some kind of ant. I don't know. Hopefully not fire ants. But yeah, that's kind of a cool rock. So I like this shape right here. <laughs> maybe we can make something out of this. Okay, maybe we can find some random shapes down there in that crevasse. Let's go check it out. Bunch of random blobs of gook. I don't know exactly what this is. Some kind of moss floating on top of the water. I think we could probably use one of these. I saw this flower and it looked really strange. I've never really seen anything like this. It kind of reminds me of honeysuckle. And it looks like there's kind of water dripping out of them, if you can see that. But the way that the stem grows, I'm going to pluck one of these so you guys can see it a little bit better. It grows not from the base of the uh, the petal, the flower there, but it grows up to the top. Very, very strange. If anybody knows what this is, let me know. But I think this will make a really cool, random shape for us to turn into a character. All right, I think that was a pretty successful adventure. Let's go ahead and head back to the office, take our photos and random shapes that we found, and try to make something cool. We're back in the office in the nice AC, away from the humidity outside. It was getting really gross out there. On the way back, I ended up finding even more cool things to turn into some characters or creatures, just random shapes, some cool little spider webby type stuff. I think maybe they were from caterpillars. It's a local thing, it doesn't matter. The problem is, I think we found a little bit too much and just because sculpting takes so freaking long, I don't think we're gonna be able to turn everything we found into a character or creature or whatever. So I'm going to pick about two here that we can turn into something, starting off with that cool rock that I found with the fossil in it, just because I think that has the most amount of direction or possibilities that we could probably turn into something. So we're gonna play around with that one first. Let's go ahead and do that now. Hop on over into ZBrush and get started. I got my random rock shape here. I got my sphere that I start every sculpt with. Let's go ahead and begin. So the first thing I wanna do is try to get something close to uh, the silhouette of this shape. And because it's a fossil, my, my brain is kind of going the way of like skull. It kind of looks like maybe it could be like a fish skull or something. I don't know, we'll, we'll play around with it and try to make something cool. So let's just start by getting that most basic silhouette shape. There are a few different ways I could go about this. I'm probably just gonna start deleting geometry and just call it close enough and we'll figure it out later as we go. I'm probably going to connect up some of these lines cause these kind of look like they could be like eye sockets or something and then this could be the mouth. So let's maybe instead of just chopping that directly off, 
let's play around with like pushing in the geometry around that area. And we're just doing this all from a sphere. I'm gonna start kind of playing around with some more shapes here, rotating around as much as I can. We're 3D artists, so that's kind of an important part of the uh, process, <laughs> rotating around. You'd be surprised how many people that are new to sculpting just kind of hop in and do everything from one angle, and then they end up like turning their sculpt around and it, you know, they're like, oh wow, everything's looking great, and then it's just flat like that. So we'll play around with rotating, trying to get as much stuff as we can here in the beginning. I'm just gonna be dynameshing everything together. It's feeling kind of, uh, kind of catfishy to me. Maybe we could turn this into like a little kind of Cthulhu-esque fish man or something. I'm kind of liking that idea. So let's see what we can do with that. Let's get some more shapes in here. Maybe start creating like a tiny little body, something. He's kind of feeling like a little Admiral Akbari or, or something. These are definitely like some, some lips, some jowls. He, uh, he needs kind of like a bottom part of his mouth though there too. So, all right, so I'm gonna use this to kind of just create a general bottom portion of his mouth. Let me hide the body. It'd be a little bit easier to do. Oh yeah, I, I love that. I like that a lot. <laughs> that That's gonna look really cool. Cool slash probably really, really goofy. Oh yeah. I'm liking him, I'm liking the direction. Uh, and then for the back of the head, I just need to get the uh, skull shape to kind of continue there, uh, just because of the way I kind of cut that out earlier, it kind of broke the shape. It doesn't really make too much sense. Anatomically, even though I know this isn't, you know, going to be anatomically accurate to really anything, there's still some anatomical truths that you have to uh, hit for your characters. The same thing is true if you're making like a stylized character, whether that be like Disney or World of Warcraft or whatever. There always has to be some kind of believability in there. Even if it's a complete alien creature that doesn't exist in reality, much like this little guy that we're creating here, there has to be something for people to latch onto, to understand, right? I'm really liking uh, the direction that this guy is going. He's, uh, he's getting goofier and goofier by the, the minute here. Let's try to make these eyeballs a little bit larger. I think we're probably at a good place where we could start adding some color to this guy. So let's do that next. I am feeling, I'm feeling like a little, a little bit of an orange, reddish orangish, uh, color palette here. Maybe like orange or green, maybe somewhere in between. Get a little bit more yellow. Um, what else? What else does this this poor poor creature that I've brought into the world need? Uh, he needs a lot. He's feeling, he is feeling kind of fishy. Like this could go into like a humanoid direction or like a fishy fishy direction. At this point, I figured out some direction for our character, and I've decided that I am going to turn him into a fish. We've also got some some color kind of playing around on this guy just so we can kind of figure out direction a little bit more. Uh, we're still trying to figure out the silhouette, some of the basic shapes here, but we're gonna continue on with this guy, start to get some more secondary shapes, some more parts and pieces, some fins, that kind of stuff, and that'll really help us to figure out this character a little bit more. So let's do that next. You guys thought I was kidding about the big eye thing in the last video about it making characters look more appealing, more cute. But uh, it's actually true. Just make the character 50% eyes, auto cute. Works every time. A little bit of a bug, a little bit of just kind of the way ZBrush works. You can see that the paint up here is getting really kind of splotchy and messed up. It's just kind of a, a little issue that's been in ZBrush for as long as I've been using it. Essentially what happens is uh, if you're painting and using different materials with multiple subdivision levels like I am currently, I have about five on this guy right now, not that the number matters or the poly count really even matters since we're just kind of sculpting freehand here. The issue is that as you step up and down through those subdivision levels and try to paint or adjust or sculpt 
or do anything on those lower subdivs, it starts to freak out your poly paint on the rest of this. So that's kind of what's going on there. It's really easy to fix. We can just grab our paintbrush and start going back over that and kind of clean it up. I'm not going to do that right now because I know it's just going to get messed up again later. So we're going to keep working on this guy. Try to uh, figure out some of this forehead, I guess. I don't know. I'm still playing with the silhouette from the front view, but uh, I'm going to keep on keeping on here a little bit longer and then we'll come back and try to figure out what this guy's going to look like. So here is our character after I've cleaned him up. Uh, I've also gone through and uh, repainted him a little bit. Tried to go back to the warmer uh, tone that we had before, but I still like the purple a lot, so I was thinking that we could uh, maybe kind of keep that as some kind of iridescent kind of uh, color that we could incorporate on the fins and maybe here on our, our little feelers, our antenna, our whiskers. Uh, so we'll play around with all these colors a little bit more, but now that the geometry is nice and clean, it's so much easier for me to go through and uh, continue cleaning some of this stuff up. One way that I like to kind of get this uh, gradated effect on some of these shapes to kind of transition, I'll show you how I do that here really quick with the whiskers. So we just have our color filled in on here, and what I'm going to do is just do a quick mask between these... Uh, uh, maybe about halfway. We could maybe do a little bit less. We'll play around with it. And then we want to blur our mask. Uh, I have a hotkey set up for that, but down here in the masking palette, we can just click on blur mask a few times. I want to blur it quite a bit there, as much as I can actually. And then we will control temp to invert our mask. Just grab our orange color with the C key and click on fill object. And now you can see we get this nice, cool transition as it gradates down the length of the entire whisker. So we could duplicate this whisker and get a few more of those, but I think it's time that we get some scales on this guy. We're not gonna do them everywhere because I think that would look a little awkward and heavy-handed. So I think we're just gonna do a few back here to play around with the shape. So I've got scales on this guy now. I also thought the top of his head was looking pretty bland and boring by itself, so I decided to give him uh, some hair with his fins up there. I thought that would be pretty interesting. So from here, I am going to break symmetry, do some posing, and then try to render this guy out. Hopefully you guys can still see the resemblance of our original little image over here. I'll turn off everything except for kind of that main shape. So essentially this is what we're looking at, this kind of main shape here with what I said could be like eye sockets or, or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what this bone is. Maybe some part of a spinal column for some animal. Not really sure, but it kind of looked like a face, kind of like a fish to me. And that's what we ended up creating. Hopefully you can still see the, uh, the reference in there, but I'm gonna render this guy out and we can go ahead and start working on our second character. All right, on to our next character. I am going to be using this flower that I found as a base. I still don't know what it's called. I tried to look it up. The closest thing that I could find to it was called a Dutchman's Trousers or something like that. It doesn't really matter. I couldn't find it. If you know, though, let me know. I am going to do something to this image to, I think, maybe get us in a little bit of a better area because I am kind of lost with what I'm looking at. I was thinking it might be a good idea, wherever it is, there it is, rotate. I was gonna rotate this 90 degrees, like so, and maybe try to create something out of it this way. Maybe maybe some kind of swan or bird, or like this could be a dress or something. I don't know, we'll play around with it, but let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing I wanna do is try to just match this uh, this basic shape. So I'm just going to take my sphere and start pulling out on that shape. One thing that would be cool that we could play around with is radial symmetry, which is not something that I get to use all of that often. Uh, radial symmetry is exactly what it sounds like. It's just symmetry around a uh, radial axis, which is really cool for doing stuff like cones or cylinders. Of course, we could just import this uh, as a primitive shape, but why would we do that when we can play around with radial symmetry, which is always a lot of fun to do. A little trick here, when your geometry is close to the central axis, but not quite there, there's a little function down under modified topology called mirror and weld. So I'm gonna press that, and that will get us back to something that is perfectly symmetrical. You can see that it is very messy though, so 
I'll do uh, some dynameshing and some other stuff just to kind of uh, reset our geo here back to a place that is uh, appropriate for the shape that we are looking for. To make it a little bit easier to see exactly the direction that my brain is heading in, I'll put like some eyes up here or something. Oh no, that's so, so grotesque and terrifying. He is, uh, he is not a cutie, at least not yet. We're trying to make something that's maybe uh, on par with our fish that we made previously. I think I'm just gonna turn this guy into some kind of like a monster creature with um, kind of like a snail's eyes where they have like the tentacle antenna type eyes, if you know what I'm talking about. So I think we're gonna go in that direction. I'll show you guys some cool techniques. I've done some similar stuff in the past and uh, I, I think we'll get somewhere pretty cool here. He could be like an anteater type creature or something in that vein. Maybe the petals could be his his feet. I didn't really mean to do this, but uh, maybe they could. I don't know. We'll <laughs> we'll see what happens here. This guy's getting derpier and derpier by the second, but uh, that seems to be par for the course. All right, so I want to give this guy some antennas really quick, and I'll show you guys a little trick that I like to do for eyelids. Uh, this works for you know non derpy mutant characters as well. Uh, but I am, instead of creating two eyelids, I'm just going to create one larger shape. So the way I do this is uh, duplicate your eyeball and then grab your slice curve brush and just slice your eyeball in half. So this will give you two separate poly groups. It should be a pretty clean cut, uh, assuming you are using the slice curve brush. Uh, from there, you want to split those two shapes off and kind of separate them. Uh, but in this case, because I don't need the other one, I'm just going to delete it. So from there, we can scale up. Uh, a little trick is that you want to center your scale around your eyeball and scale up from there so that it's more uniform. And make sure that local sim is turned on as well. Close holes and we'll give that... Uh, I don't need to flip anything. I shouldn't. So I think we are good with just creating the basic shape for our eyelids. can kind of see how that's coming together already. I can create a curved tube around this uh, to create a little bit more volume. So I'll do that next. Uh, another little trick here with your geometry is that when you have something open with a curved brush, you can draw around the edge and hold the shift key and it'll draw a perfect little loop around there. So that's a nice little trick to know for shapes like this. Try to get that sized a little bit more appropriately. And there we go. We have kind of the basic beginnings of our monster eye. We got some secondary shapes already happening, and all that's left is for us to create the little uh, kind of stem or antenna, I don't know, eye stalk? I think that's what it's called. I actually screwed up on my eyeball and inserted the wrong shape. I wanted to insert what's called a point sphere, uh, but instead I did a regular polysphere. Uh, the difference is in the geometry, it's pretty minor, but um, in terms of what we are using the eye for, a point sphere just tends to be better because it has a vertice that you can use as a point to kind of uh, uh, point your eye, I guess. So that's the vertice that we are looking for right there. And I'm just going to align that and place that back in my little eye stalk, eye socket thing here. <laughs> so the point of getting that uh, particular sphere again is so that I can do something like this with my mask brush. And voila, we got a really simple pupil started. Right, cha. Yeah. Beautiful, other than the rest of that kind of being messed up with some color and everything else. He's looking pretty great. Let's keep going on him. <laughs> it's a great time to give this guy some color. Now on the fish, we ended up going with that uh, warmer orange palette, uh, which is what color this flower happens to be. Uh, so I think we are going to go a, a different direction here and maybe sample some colors from the background of our image and try to play around with that. 
maybe go a little bit more of a uh, Shrek direction here. <laughs> I don't know, we'll, we'll play with the colors, maybe something a bit darker, something a little bit closer to that. I can already see this guy's mouth with like a derpy tongue hanging out the side and it's going to be amazing. So occasionally, if you remesh geometry in ZBrush, you'll notice that it'll kind of explode or it'll have a bunch of holes in it or be really thin. If that is the case, I recommend just doing a quick smooth pass on your geometry, just very gently, typically around those really tight edges, and that tends to uh, fix that from happening. This guy's starting to feel a little bit like a Sesame Street character or, or a Muppet or something in that vein. <laughs> I want to open his mouth just ever so slightly right here. I still want it to be all connected through there and I kind of just want to get like a <laughs> tongue hanging out or maybe it's like you can see the tongue and then it's like poking out here at the bottom. I think that would be pretty cool. So that was one idea, just kind of sticking it out down here at the bottom. I actually think that's a, just looking a bit too creepy. So instead, I'm just going to hang it out uh, the side of his mouth up here. There we go, we're getting a pretty nice shape there. I think positionally, it just maybe needs to be tweaked a little bit still. One thing that's kind of like a, a very common beginner mistake is making sure that your geometry interacts with other geometry in a way that makes sense. So for instance, if you have a tongue sticking out of a mouth, you can't have the surrounding parts of the uh, mouth intersecting with that and kind of breaking reality, breaking physics, right? That's not something that we would expect to see, even for some kind of weird derpy alien creature like this guy. God, he looks so stupid. <laughs> uh, so interaction, make sure your stuff is interacting in an appropriate way. And this goes for everything, not just tongues, of course. We've got a bit of this like two-tone color palette going on right now, which I think will work pretty well for this. I just need now to kind of work on proportions, try to get that feeling a bit closer to our, uh, our flower shape, which, you know, we've still kind of uh, strayed from that pretty far, but I think we've kind of kept the theme of, of the shape pretty well. All right, um, let's, let's get some more of these. I'm just gonna do some basic duplication. Six feels too spider-like. We want more octopus feeling, so we'll go for a few more. And then we will go for symmetry breaking. So I think they're still kind of in a flat, kind of petaled shape, so that's good. It's just more so they all look way too uniform, so let's break this up. And right now I'm just kind of looking at the silhouette. I really want to avoid things overlapping from the front view. So that'll probably be what we render from. So I want that to be a bit more varied there. So we've definitely broken symmetry on there. I feel like they feel a bit goofy, uh, but that kind of fits with the theme of the character. So I'm not you know, hugely upset about that. Uh, I'm thinking about making them much larger or uh, much smaller here. So I wanna try making them quite a bit larger first. I think that feels pretty good uh, compared to the size that we had before. And I think making these a lot smaller would just start to feel uh, like they're probably like useless to the character. Like are they feet, are they arms? I want them to be a little bit of both. And if they're super short, he's not really gonna be able to use them for anything. So let's be nice to the guy and give him something useful here. One thing I would really like to do is just give this guy some polka dots. And I'm just going to go around with a few different sized brushes here to create some polka dots. And typically for this kind of thing, uh, less tends to be more. So we don't wanna go super heavy handed here. I'm just going to switch my brush size every time I rotate around this goober and give him a polka dot here and there. Let's make sure that we're not kind of intersecting anything either. So one way that you can help uh, kind of break up visual interest when you're trying to add a pattern or a texture much like this, I'm trying to do some polka dots on this guy. Uh, instead of just having you know a bunch of varied shapes and sizes, which is important, 
instead of just kind of spreading those out evenly or even randomly, it's nice to cluster a few together. So if you have just one really large shape that's taking up a lot of visual interest, having a cluster of a few different shapes uh, that are, you know, obviously not exactly the same size can help to kind of equalize that a little bit so it's not quite so strong of a visual pool in just one area. So I just Z remeshed on this little shape and obviously the geometry broke, but it, uh, it created a fun little face there. That's pretty cool. Hmm, yeah. I'm liking him. Okay, let's get some more uh, asymmetry, specifically up by the eyes and face. Typically, if I am trying to break symmetry on a character very quickly, I will immediately just start rotating it along the Y axis to kind of just get it off center, uh, get it feeling a bit more organic, especially for a character it starts to feel very awkward if everything is just facing the same direction. And it's really hard to get your brain out of that mental state where you're, you're trying to break symmetry, you're trying to create something that's more organic. So I find that tends to help a little bit. All right, that is going to be, I think, our finished quick little plant alien creature. He's really goofy, he's really fun. I'm gonna do a quick render of this guy and see what he looks like. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video, I guess. Uh, this one's getting just a little bit too long in the tooth, so I think I'm gonna cut it here at two characters with the possibility of uh, returning to this challenge again in the future. I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. If you wanna check out my brushes or any of my courses, there's a link to my Gumroad down below. And leave a comment down below if there's anything cool that you'd like to see me attempt in the future, whether it be a character that you'd like to see me try to sculpt or a challenge that you'd like to see me try to do. Whatever it is, let me know down below. Until next time, you guys have a great rest of your day, and I hope to see you around.